Hello viewers, welcome to this new series on Oracle Data Guard. And in this pilot episode, we are going to learn how to create a physical standby database using Oracle Enterprise Manager. So viewers, in this series, I am going to cover various topics starting with what is Oracle Data Guard, how to implement it, how to monitor and alert on data guard status using OEM, switchover or failover, etc., which I am listing below. I assume you are an Oracle DBA or already familiar with at least the basics of Oracle database architecture. I will keep everything simple so there won't be any difficulty in understanding the concepts even if you are a beginner. Let's first understand what is Oracle Data Guard. As the name implies, Oracle Data Guard is the guard or protector of your data. In the Data Guard configuration, you will have one database where your users or application is connected, making the changes, and it is called the primary database. As each and every change happening in the primary database also generates the redo logs in the primary, these redo logs are then propagated to one or more standby database and applied on them, keeping them in sync with the primary database. For any reason, say the primary DB is down or destroyed and the users are no more able to connect. In that case, the standby DB will be converted and brought up as the new primary database, which is called a failover activity. And users will start connecting to the new primary database, which was a standby database before, to continue their work. But this was a very simple hypothetical scenario that I have given as an example. The standby database used in this example is called a physical standby, but there are many more technical terms or entities like snapshot standby, read-only standby, logical standby, far sync standby, etc. Also, there is another recovery activity called switchover as opposed to the one that I just mentioned as failover. The example that I have given here was just the primary and one standby database in the configuration. In fact, there can be as many as 30 standby databases against one primary DB. Let's take a look at this diagram. Here, it is like a broadcast or regular configuration with three standby databases receiving redo data simultaneously from the primary database. Let's take a look at the next one. In this diagram, it is like a cascade configuration with a standby database receiving redo data from one primary DB and then that standby database is sending the redo data to the second and the third standby database. So we will learn all of this as we go. You can create a physical standby using database configuration assistant or DBCA or the RMAN duplicate command or taking an RMAN backup of the primary database and then restoring it in another standby server. There are many more options to create a physical standby database. I have given the steps to create the standby database using DBCA, RMAN duplicate command or using an RMAN backup in the description of this video below. But in this tutorial, I am demonstrating the method using OEM, which is the easiest and quickest way to create the standby database. Oracle Data Guard is an indispensable part of Oracle's high availability solutions. In a real world scenario, the primary and physical standby databases reside on geographically different locations or different data centers to make sure that even if one region goes down, your database is still available and intact. But in this tutorial and the series, I am using a virtual environment for demonstration purpose only. I have created my test environment using Oracle VirtualBox virtual machines. If you want to learn more about Oracle VirtualBox virtual machines and how to create your virtual learning environment, please watch my other series in YouTube for which I have given the link in the description of this video below. Moreover, I am using Oracle Enterprise Manager extensively in this episode as well as in the whole series. If you want to learn more about OEM and become a master in OEM, starting from installation, monitoring, alerting, upgrade, patching, etc., please watch my 16-part YouTube series named Mastering OEM for which I have given the link in the description of this video below. So I have created three servers. The first one is the OEM server where OEM 13.5 has been installed and configured properly. And I have two other servers called Linux 1 and Linux 2. All these three servers have Oracle Linux 7.9 64-bit installed. 
and also I have Oracle 19.3 installed for creating the database. So this admin server is the server where OEM 13.5 has been installed. Just to take a look at the status of OEM, whether it is currently up. And we see that the OEM 13.5 is currently up and running. Our first database server, that is the Linux one, it has a database already created with the name test DZ, which is created just for testing the data guard. And let's take a look at the etc aura tab file. And here we can see this test DZ is the database. And this is running from 19.3 home. And we see that the database name test DZ is currently up and running. Just ignore the other PMON processes. This belongs to some other databases running. And this is the one that we are going to use as a primary database. Now, I also have one dedicated listener running from the same Oracle home with the Oracle database. And I will simply go to the Oracle Home Network Admin Location to see the configuration of the listener. I'll just cat the listener.ora file to show you the listener named listener underscore test DZ, which is dedicated for this particular database only. And this is currently listening at the port 1523. So we will bring up this listener lsnrctl start listener test dz and the listener has been brought up now let's log into the primary database on the linux one server as sysdba and take a look into a few more properties and initialization parameter settings so sql plus slash s sysdba first let's Set the formatting settings. Lines 300, pages 300, and then select name, DB unique name, database role, open mode from V dollar database. So I'm just copying and pasting this SQL statement here just to save time. And we see that the DB name is test DZ. Database unique name is test dz1. Database role is primary. Open mode is in read write. So this db unique name is a very important parameter in a data guard configuration where db name will always be the same for the primary and all the standby databases in the configuration, but they will differ by the unique name. So if you give the primary database name as test dz, then you can give the unique names like testdz1 to the primary database and the subsequent standby databases as testdz2, testdz3, etc. Now let's see the file locations. So I'll simply put the query select name from v$ data file. And we see that there are four data files, all are residing on the file system named u001. Then let's take a look at the control files. And the control files are also in the U001 file system. Then let's take a look at the redo log files. And we see that all these redo log files are also in the U001 file system. Now let's take a look at the fast recovery area. So we'll simply do show parameter recovery. And we can see that the recovery area file destination is also U001. So we see that this database has all its data files, redo log files, control files, and fast recovery area, etc. in the same file system in the primary server named U001. And I am using it just for demonstration and testing purpose of this tutorial. This is not a recommended configuration. Now this second server named Linux2 
will be used to host the standby database. So we will call it as our standby server. The standby server has also Oracle 19.3 installed, but there is no standby database created so far. And that we are going to create using OEM. Let's take a look at the let's see, Aura tab. And there are some other database instances which are mentioned here. This is one ASM instance. And there is a rack instance also registered, but we don't have any standby databases yet. Now, there are a couple of prerequisites that we have to meet before we can create the physical standby database using OEM. The first one is the primary database must be in archive log mode. Of course, without archive log mode enabled, you cannot send redo data to the standby. I'm using ORINV to set the environment and our database name is testdz. I will connect to the database and it is already up. I will simply see whether the archive log mode is enabled. Yes, automatic archival is enabled and database is in archive log mode. Now, the second prerequisite is same version of Oracle software installed on both the primary and standby servers that we already validated because our primary and the standby server both has Oracle 19.3 installed. The third prerequisite to create the standby database using OEM is an OEM host named credential for both primary and standby hosts must be created. That we will do in a minute once we go to the OEM console. The fourth one is an OEM DB named credential for the sys user in the primary database must be created. That will also be taken care of once we go to the OEM console. The fifth prerequisite is the listeners in the primary and the standby should ideally have the same port. That means if the listener in the primary server is listening at the port 1523, this should be the same in the standby server also. And the sixth prerequisite is the listener must be up on the standby host from the same Oracle home as the database. So I will go to the standby server, go to the Oracle home, then network, admin location, and there we will configure the listener. Right now, we see that there is no listener configured in this particular Oracle home. So we will have to first create the listener.ora file. So we can simply copy the lines from the primary server, whatever was there in the listener.ora file with a little bit of modification, we'll be able to use this. We cat the listener.ora file in the primary server and I have these lines already displayed. So I'll simply copy it. And in the standby server, I will simply create a new file with the name listener.ora that is the listener configuration file and I will put these lines that I copied from the primary server and I will make any server specific changes in the lines here whatever is relevant for example the host will be here Linux 2 and all other settings will remain the same so we are giving the same name to the listener in the standby server also which is going to listen in the port 1523. Let's save it. And now we will bring up the listener. LSNRCTL start listener test DZ. And the listener has been started. Number seven, primary and standby servers have the same storage capacity, file system layout, hardware and OS configuration. Now having the same file system layout in primary and standby is optional, but if the file system names are different, you have to use certain initialization parameter settings like db file name convert, log file name convert, etc. to handle that difference. We will talk about these parameters later on, but for now, let's assume that our primary and standby servers are completely identical except the host names. I will show the file system layout of the primary and the standby server. First, uh, in the primary server, let's clear the screen and do a df minus h. And we will do the same thing in the standby server also. Let's clear it. 
with df minus h. And in the primary server, that is the Linux one, we see that this u001 is the file system where Oracle Home as well as our control file, data file, everything resides. This is not an ideal configuration because in an actual production environment, you will have different file systems for data files, control files, read log files, etc. And also the fast recovery area. But in our case, I just want to show you that I am using the same file system layout for both the primary and the standby server where the U001 file system has a capacity of 98 gigs. And also in the Linux 2, this has a capacity of 98 gigs. So these both are identical in terms of the file systems. Also, the hardware configurations are similar because these are virtual machines and I copied the second one from the first one to create the second virtual machine. Now we are ready to go to our OEM console and do the remaining steps. Please note that although I am demonstrating this easy method of creating the standby database, we are going to discuss all the configuration and parameters, everything that is required to be set that includes the performance parameters also in our coming tutorials. So now we are going to our OEM console and log in as sysman user. Please note that whatever steps I am going to follow here until the standby database is created, all those steps I will mention in the description of this video below or in a linked document in my Google Drive for which I will also share the link in the description of this video below. If you want, you can copy the commands and go through each and every step when you do this experiment in your learning environment. So first thing, we will go to all targets and we'll see if the database named TestDZ is already here as a manage target. And let's list out all our databases. And in this list, we can see that this particular database target named testdz1.manage.home is the one that is our primary database, which is displayed here as a target. Now, why this is testdz1? This is actually the unique name of the database. This is not the database name. So if we take a look at this database target configuration, we'll be able to understand everything clearly. So I'll right click go to Oracle database, target setup, and go to monitoring configuration. And here we can see that this is the server, linux onemanagehome This is our first server. And the port for the listener is 1523, which I have already explained. And the database SID is testdz. But we have given the name of the target as testdz1, so that you will be able to uniquely identify this database in the configuration. Let's do a test connection to see if it is able to connect. And yes, the connection was successful. Click cancel. Next, we will list out all the servers to see if our primary and the standby servers are monitored by our OEM system as managed targets or not. So I will go to targets. Then under that, I'll click on the hosts menu. And we see that there are three hosts already monitored by our OEM system. The first one is the OEM server itself. And the Linux one is the primary server. And Linux two is our standby server, which are already displayed here as our monitored server targets. Now, the next thing we need to validate, as I mentioned before, the host name credential that will work for both these hosts and the database name credential for the primary database which will be using the sys user. So I will go to setup and security and under that named credentials. Let's increase the height of this window. Now in this list, you'll be able to see there are a lot of different named credentials created already. Some are host name credential and some are database credential, etc. And the one that I'm going to use as a host credential for our target servers Linux 1 and Linux 2 is the Oracle Global Host. This particular name credential is created as a global host credential because this will be applicable for multiple hosts, not just one host. And the username that is used here is the Oracle user, which is the owner of all the Oracle software installations on the server. 
which we usually use in our Oracle installations. So I am using Oracle user. If in your environment it is something else who owns the Oracle installations, you can use that user to create the host name credential. If you want to know more about OEM name credentials, please watch my video on OEM name credentials for which I have given the link in the description of this video below and describing everything you need to know to use, administer and manage the name credentials. Now to test this name credential against both our candidate servers, I will simply select this, then click on the test button and in the target name, I will select our first primary server that is Linux one. Target type host is already selected and now we will click on the test button. So test is successful and we will do the same test for the other server also by simply changing this one to two that is the linux 2.manage.home is the name of the second server click on the test button and the test was successful so our host name credential is working for both the hosts we also need the database named credential that i mentioned before which will use the sys user but we will create that named credential for the sys user in the go when we will create our standby database now i will go to the targets menu then again select the all targets and from there it is already giving us all the databases and from there i will select our primary database here just click on that so we can go to the home page of the database and for this database test dz1 we are going to create our standby database again this test dz1.manage.home is just the target name it is not exactly the database name as i explained i am using the unique name of the database to create this target name now once we are at the home page of the database we will go to the availability then select the add standby database now it will ask for the database login and here we have to use the sys user so i will use sys and the password and sys user must be always login with the role sysdba and then i will also save it as a name credential so i am putting a name nc sys test dz so this name credential will be applicable for both the primary and standby database which will have the same database name as testdz but they will differ by their unique names so i am keeping this name for the name credential as nc sys test dz and this set as preferred credential you may or may not set for now i am checking this in and also selecting whenever i want to connect to this database using this preferred credential i will be login as sysdba and i will click on the login button now we are in the add standby database page where the first option is create a new physical standby database secondly create a new logical standby database third manage an existing standby database with data guard broker and the fourth one create a primary database backup only so out of this i will select this first one we'll discuss about these other options when the time comes so we will click on the continue button because we are going to create just a new physical standby database in the next screen it is asking whether we are going to use an online backup that is the use recovery manager armen to copy the database files or copy the database files via staging areas or we already have an existing backup because we don't have an existing backup so we will select this first option online backup so it will create a backup as we go online while creating the standby database so this first option is selected and this next button in this screen we have a couple of options that we can customize like the degree of parallelism so how much or what level of degree will be used while making this backup so usually it is depending on the number of cpus so 
if it's a huge database of multi terabyte size then it is better to use a higher level of degree of parallelism for us two is enough so i'm using two here and the primary host credential if you see here and i'm going to use the one that i tested a couple of minutes back that is the oracle global host again if you have not created that you still have the option to create a new name credential here but as for us we already have it available so i am selecting the one that i already tested and here in the third section it's asking primary database standby redo log files so standby redo log file is something it is called srl where the redo logs generated in the primary will be directly written over in the standby redo logs which are available in the standby server so that is the suggested way so we will select that and also we are selecting use oracle managed files that is omf for standby redo log files all the other settings it is taking automatically now we will click on the next button now we have to specify the standby database attributes so first of all the standby database attributes that is the instance name so instance name will be again test dz we are not going to change it database storage will be in file system the host which it is taking as the primary database itself by default we have to change it to our standby server that is the linux 2 so click on this search button here and from the list we will select the linux 2 as the oracle home part for the primary and the standby server is the same we will keep it that way now standby database host credential here also we are going to use the same name credential that is oracle global host that we already tested against both our primary and standby server click on the next button in this screen it is giving us a couple of options to customize our primary database is test dz1 the primary host is linux1 and the standby host is linux2 under this database area section it is giving us an estimate of how much space will be required that is based on the primary database's size for us it's around 3.6 gigs and the database area it is selected which is u001 app oracle aura data which is the same as the primary so as i mentioned before for now let's assume that the primary and the standby server both have the similar file systems with their names and in terms of capacity you can always create file systems with different names in your standby server than the primary server but if you do that you have to make changes in certain parameters to handle that kind of difference we will talk about that later on for now let's assume that both the primary and the standby server has the same name in the file systems and also their capacities are the same now if you want you can multiplex the redo log and control file locations i am keeping it the default way now in the first recovery area section it is grayed out it's selected by default so we'll leave it that way and the first recovery area size it is giving as 7.3 gigs it's okay because it's a small database just for testing purpose and this option automatically delete applied archive redo log files when space is needed this should be turned on because that will save some space then use oracle optimal flexible architecture compliant directory structure this is enabled by default because my source database is also in ofs structure now the listener configuration we have two options here first one is the default grid infrastructure listener so it will actually give us options to select the listeners which are available in the standby server for example in this server i have a grid infrastructure installation and by default it is taking that listener to be used but i am not going to use that listener instead i am going to use the one that we created specifically for this data guard testing purpose with the name listener underscore test dz which is listening in the port 1523 so all our settings are done here now click on the next button now it's giving an warning and the first one says the database area the specified location u001 app oracle aura data does not exist and will be created automatically do you want to continue 
Similarly, the first recovery area is also not present and it will be created automatically. We are okay with that because we are maintaining the same structure of the file systems and their capacity. So we are okay with that. So click on the continue button. Now in this screen, it's asking about Oracle Restart configuration. We are not going to use the Oracle Restart. So we will not select this option. Standby database parameters. This is very important. If you see the database unique name. So here it is automatically taking a name as testdz11 because the unique name of the primary database is testdz1. So that is adding one more one at the end of the name. But instead of this, I will use it as testdz2. And it is also giving us an option to create the target name. So similarly, I will put as testdz2 dot minus dot home, which is the domain and the standby database monitoring credentials. So it is asking what monitoring credential will be using. Obviously, it is going to be the sysdba monitoring credential for the standby database because the normal user dbsnmp will not be able to connect to the standby database which will be in mount mode and it is also giving us one option to configure the data guard broker which is the beauty of using this oem system because you don't have to additionally configure the data guard broker oem will do everything for you automatically so we will select this option and if we expand this option data guard broker connections it will also give us the connection details at this point, we will select everything as default. We don't want to make any change here. And then we will click on the next button. So the warning about the database area and the first recovery area is displayed again. We will simply ignore it and click on the continue button. And this is the review page and it is giving a summary of what we have selected so far. Everything looks good. This is the primary side where we see that the target name is testdz1, which is using the unique name of the primary database. The database name is the testdz. Instance name is the testdz. Database version is 19c. The Oracle home specified here, the host name and the operating system platform. And the host username is Oracle. In the standby side, we see that the target name is testdz2. The database name and the instance name are the same. And Oracle version, Oracle home, host, that is the Linux 2, operating system, host name, host username, that is Oracle, backup type, new backup, that is going to be created on the go. File transfer method, RMN duplicate command. So now you understand that internally, OEM is actually going to use the RMN duplicate command to create this standby. Database unique name that is testdz2, standby type, physical standby, database area, and the fast recovery area both are going to be created by OEM for us. And the fast recovery area size by default it is taking as 7.3 gigs. We are okay with that. Automatically delete the archive redo log files, configure standby database with Oracle Restart. No. Let's expand this standby database storage to see what files it is going to create. This is going to be the same as primary because our file systems are the same and we can leave it everything as default and then click on the finish button. And in this information page, we can see that the standby database creation job has been submitted. And we can click on this view job link to go to the detail page of the job which is currently creating the standby database for us and here in this page which is displaying the job progress we will set the auto refresh to 15 seconds so we get an update every 15 seconds right now the status of the job is running i will pause the video and i will come back time to time when there is something worth mentioning so the first few lines of the database creation log has been displayed here where we can see that it is connecting to the standby host and doing a couple of things there 
based on the size of your primary database, this may take a couple of hours. But in our case, our primary database being a very small database within 100 gig size, so it will not take more than 10 minutes. It has been almost 5 minutes and it's still going on. A lot of logs have been generated. We can scroll down and see what's going on. So after around 10 minutes, we can see that the job has been successfully completed. First, let's go to targets menu and then all targets and see if a new target has been added. And yes, we see that the test DZ2 is now available and the status is shown with an warning like availability evaluation error. Let's see what is this. Right click Oracle database target setup. Go to monitoring configuration. Now I'll try to test a connection first of all. And it says the connection test was successful. Click on the next button. Submit. And we see that now it is green. Sometimes it takes a couple of minutes to reflect the correct status of the target. I believe that is what was happening here also because I have not done any changes, but now I can see that the standby database status is shown as green. So our standby database has been created successfully. Now I'll go back to our command prompt and from there we will do a couple of tests to validate if our data guard configuration is actually working fine. Now to validate if our data guard configuration is working, I will go to the first server that is Linux one. Let's clear the screen. And our environment has been already set for the test DZ database. I will connect to the database using sysdba set lines equal to 300. We'll select name that is the database name db unique name database role open mode from v dollar database in the output we can see that the name that is the database name is test dz the db unique name is test dz1 for the primary database database role is primary and the open mode is read write and we will execute the same query in the standby database also let's clear the screen first let's take a look at the at c or attempt to see if the new entry for the standby database is created yes we see that the test dz for this standby database there is an entry created automatically in our standby server let's clear it and set the environment that is our test dz and connect to the database as sysdba sysdba and we will execute the same query format the output and here we see that for the standby database the name of the database is the same db unique name is different it is test dz2 and database role is physical standby and the open mode is mounted now let's validate a couple of more things here first we will create a small table in the primary and we will see if the same table has been created in the standby also to validate that all the changes happening in the primary are synced to the standby database. Next, we'll see if the processes responsible for receiving the redo data and applying that in the standby database are running or not. To do that, we will use the query select process status sequence has from v dollar managed standby and here the most important one is the MRP that is the managed recovery process which is responsible for applying the logs that it is receiving from the primary database and the other ones like RFS this is the remote file system ARC this is the archival process and data guard process everything is running 
successfully. And here we can see that the log that it, that it is currently applying is the sequence number 27. And we can go back to the primary and we can see what is the current log sequence. So we can see that it is 27 and it is already applying. So it is current with all the changes from the primary. But to validate that, first we will create a small table in the primary side and we will see if the same table is available in the standby side or not. To do that, first we will go to the primary. We will create a small table like say, create table test tab as say, select sysdate as sd and one as num that is the alias from dual and this will simply create a small table named test tab which will have only one row and the first column will have the sysdate and the second column will have the number one and the table is created let's do a select star from test tab and we see that these two columns are available now we will see if in the standby that particular table is available or not but currently the standby database is in mounted state and in this state we cannot execute the query so first we have to shut down and restart it in a read-only mode to find out whether that table is available in the standby site or not but before shutting it down it is always wise to shut down the managed recovery process to do that alter database recover managed standby database cancel will stop the mrp process oops i did a small mistake there so it should be alter database recover managed there is an extra a came there and now it is correct and the database altered and if we execute this same query again we'll see that the mrp process is now not running so now we can shut down the database and we'll do simply startup open read only let's execute our first query to see the open mode and we see that the database is currently open in read only mode now we will execute the same query that select star from test tab to see if the same row is returned and yes now we see that the same row is returned in the standby database also it means our physical standby is working fine so all our preliminary tests and validations have been completed so this is how we can create a standby database using oem in the next part we will discuss about the configuration settings different parameters and failover switchover using data guard broker and also a few useful commands and sql queries to work with our data guard configuration so viewers please provide your feedback in the comment section of the video and hit the like button if you found it useful that will mean a lot to me and help grow this channel